Hello YouTube! Welcome back to MJ's Thoughts. I'm your host MJ. Thanks for tuning in to my thoughts and it has been a while, hasn't it Casey? It's been a long time. You guys may remember Casey Brown, music extraordinaire. We're also joined by a new member today, Spencer Muirhead, also known as the Canadian Butcher. Comes from Toronto, Canada. Uh, happy to have him here. Gentlemen, where are we today? Well, we are in a town in Austria, small town, maybe 30 minutes outside of Vienna. It is called Himberg. And forgive me if I butcher that pronunciation. We're a long way from home is the, is the bottom line. Uh, but we still have the internet here, believe it or not. And we came across a, a little internet challenge called the Pringles Ring. Um, apparently it's possible to build a entire ring out of just Pringle chips, no glue, nothing to support it just chips alone so i went to the store today got us some six cans of pringles these are all the uh non-original flavors they had we got classic paprika which is just paprika is the word for pepper here in austria so classic paprika sweet paprika extra hot cheese and chili sour cream and onion that's a classic hot and spicy and italian style pizza what do you say gentlemen Flavor profile, I think this one's gonna be the best, but we're not sampling them, we're building a ring, but that's just my opinion. We'll probably sample them later, I yep. can almost guarantee it. Yeah, okay. All right, gentlemen, choose your sleeve. Before we start. You're right. We have a special shout out. Shouts out. Uh, he spells his name, I think, B-E-R-N-D, but it's pronounced anything but burned. It's more like band. Bant. Bant, pretty sure I'm saying that wrong, but shouts out to him. He subscribed the other day, young baseball player here in Austria, good left-handed kid, fun to be around. We, we promised him we'd shout him out, so that's yep. what we're doing. Shout out to Ben. He also uh, acquired us like three new subscribers, so we're up to 12 now. Thank you, Bert. Ben, Ben, however you want to say it. Are you guys ready? Let's get Pringley. Choose your sleeve. Going with the extra hot. Careful not to touch your eyes, it could play into the, uh, the strategy. I'm going to go with the classic sour cream and onion. Well, favorite. my question is, are we going to need more than one can? I don't know. There's three on the floor. We're going to find out. There's a lot of Pringles in these things, if I remember top. correctly. Spencer, I know you're a pretty, pretty quiet guy, but uh, what, what have you to say about... Uh, the culture of Austria compared to North American culture and maybe even uh, Canadian culture specifically to our Canada. Uh, it's really cool. It's different. Uh, a lot of some things are a lot different, but overall, it's been a really good experience. Good to hear. You like you like it here. You like yeah. Have you been enjoying your time? Very much so. Okay. Right off the bat, I notice I have a lot of broken chips Could be a problem. in my container. Now, I don't know if the rules apply where you're only allowed to use one sleeve or not. If so, I could be having problems. I don't think there's rules to this. No rules? It's, no. It's just, it's can you build a ring out of Pringles? Can you build? How good at building are you? I'm going to start off, I'm going to separate my whole chips from my broken chips. Smart move. You should probably start the clock. Yep, we're gonna time this. See how long it takes us. So I, the clock I, I, is started. I watched a lot of Bob the Builder growing up, and I'm hoping that comes into play. His prior here. experience could be handy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although he fixes things, and I don't want this to be fixed. I want it to be built. I want mm. it to be built different, even. Um, or at least just like all the other Pringles rings okay. I've seen on the internet. These, this reserve here will be used for energy. Um, quick carbs. Yeah, quick carbs. Energy replenishment. If at any point I start to get hangry during this video. Casey does spend 50% of each day hangry, minimum. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's getting better at combating the emotional turmoil. Yeah. And you realize I'm not laughing because it's true. Spence off to a hot start. He's like, he's not listening to anything we're saying. He's just going after it. It's true. And I'd also like to note that he has, I'm pretty sure, about a 90%, 95% chip intact ratio. 
Not one of those is broken. That's, except the one he just dropped on the that's, floor. That's, I, I think that's that's Canadian wisdom right there. He know. even caught it, so. We're a little behind the ball here, Case. But this is not a race against time. Nor is this America versus Canada. We're all friends here. Casey! Yeah, Matt. Your first time abroad, yes? Yes. First time in a foreign country. How has your experience been thus far? Well, let me let me change my thoughts because I'm, I'm, right now I'm looking at your guys' sprinkle rings and I've got about five chips down and they have about 30. Um, but to answer your question, I've really enjoyed it. You know, when, when you first come over to a new country, there's a little bit, god dang it, there's a little bit of a, uh, I don't even, you ask me to do this and talk at the same time, I'm just going to talk because if I try and do this and talk at the same time, it's just not going to work. When you come over to a new country, at least in my experience, there's a little bit of a window of a honeymoon period where everything's cool because you're in a new country. Um, but after that, that has worn off. I still really liked it. Um, the people here are awesome. They're really friendly. They're really inclusive. They're, they're just good people, which it's cool to see that similarity around the world. And we're like really far away from home. I mean, we're talking a good 14 hour plane ride from the United States, from the West Coast. But it's cool to see the, the positive human interaction in a place, you know, away from what you're used to. I'm gonna stop talking because Matt's halfway done with his ring. And, Did talk for uh, a while there. And I, I only nice. have five chips down on the table. So, <laughs> um, I stand by my statement. I think it's worth noting. Um, I, I think I can uh, build and talk at the same time here. I'm a little more talented to case. A little more talented than Case in that department. I just don't understand. But we'll see. It remains to be seen. I don't uh, understand this. I think it is important to note that we are here playing international baseball, uh, which is a thing that most people, I don't think, really know exists. True. Uh, with the exception of maybe the leagues in Japan and Australia and South Korea, where the baseball is exceptional. Um, but baseball does exist in Europe, and it does exist beyond Little League. Uh, most people probably know about the Little League World Series and how there's always an international representative bracket where eight teams compete, and then they go on to compete against, uh, or the winner of that half bracket goes on to compete against uh, the representative from America in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. It's quite the show every year. It's a lot of fun to watch. I've never been, but I would like to. But uh, beyond Little League here in Europe, there exist uh, many, many actually adult baseball leagues. Um, and some places have some really, really exceptional baseball, such as uh, the Czech Republic and Italy and Spain and Belgium. We're here in Austria where it's good baseball, I would say, overall. Overall. Um, it's not elite, as, as most people generally assume when talking about baseball, um, at least professional baseball. Uh, but it's a lot of fun regardless. Casey was talking about how um, the people here are, are very inclusive and very kind and including, and that extends to the members of the baseball team we play for. By the way, I'm done with mine. So what time is it? That, that, oh wow, less than six that minutes. Took you five. It took you wow. six minutes. That's pretty good. I didn't. I, I'm. I'll be honest. I thought it was gonna be a lot harder than that. <laughs> I thought it was gonna take a lot longer. You guys carry on, and I'll just. I'll just. I'll just prattle. But uh, international baseball here in Austria. I don't know about the other guys, but if I was to compare it to a level in uh, the United States. Woo. Well done. Thank nice. you. I'd say it's probably like, I don't know, a low level Juco overall, the level. Yeah. As an average of the team. As an average, yeah. In my opinion, if the pitching, if there is more quality pitching, then that level would go up. 
And there is good pitching. I mean, there's there's guys here who that's oh, that, that's, that's tragic. tragic. I mean, there's, there's guys who for those of you who may have not noticed or can't really see it, I'm not sure from the picture right now, but Spencer's ring just absolutely collapsed. And he, he's going to have to start all over from scratch. Slow and steady wins the race. I'm going to snag one of these, which is funny because Matt already built his. Italian style pepperoni is pretty good. I'm not going to lie, you should snag one of those while you can. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, excuse the interruption, the GoPro that we use got too hot. What you missed in about the minute and a half it took us to get a new camera. Maybe you've seen it, Spencer's ring fell down, but unfortunately so did Matt's. But it was complete. And it's on camera, so you Hopefully the GoPro it. footage has it. I will just I rebuild. I guess Matt's new challenge is to build it faster than I can build this. All right, these, Where are, were these we? are really good, by the way. We were talking about, uh, what flavor did you pick? Hot and spicy. Hot and spicy. We were talking about the level of baseball here in Europe, mm -hmm. specifically here in Austria. Yeah, I'd say like low level Juco. I think you were saying if the pitching was better. Yeah, because there, there, there are, there are be good arms. There are guys who have good stuff, but not enough quantity of good arms. Yes per team. There's nine teams in the first division of Austrian baseball. Um, five on the east side near Vienna, which is where we are, and four on the west side. All the way on the other side of the country, 10 hour train ride away. Yep. We'll say though, the train ride to the east side of the country. West. West side of the country. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. It's back and forth. Well, the train ride to the other side of the country. Gorgeous. We you go through the uh, the Alps. The Austrian Alps. Austrian Alps. Not to be confused with the Swiss Alps. The Swiss Alps are in Switzerland. <laughs> you don't say. You go through the Alps, and we were talking about it on the train. There's all these little villages that are dispersed throughout the train ride, and when you think to yourself, village in the Alps. It's what these towns look like. You go Google that in- uh, Breathtaking. You'll, you'll find it's exactly how it looks like on the internet, I swear. Exactly what whatever Google image po pops up when you type in village in the Alps or Alps or whatever it is, they're really that picturesque in real life too. It's quite amazing. It would be one thing, we're, we're here in the summer. It'd be one thing to see it in the winter, I think. I think it would be incredible. It'd be yeah. equally as beautiful, probably, yeah. probably more to see it all covered with snow. Hey, oh. Spence, you haven't talked much, so yeah. I'm gonna make you. Oh, great. <laughs> what, uh, what are your thoughts on- uh, Spencer's a man of many, many thoughts. The state of baseball in Austria and then Europe as a whole. Spencer's actually been here for baseball more than Casey and I have. He's coached national teams. Help, I helped him, yes. He's coached national baseball teams here in Europe, specifically the Greece team, right? Greek team, yeah. Yeah, the Greece national team. Spencer has um, been a part of, I finished my ring again. Okay, you want to just show off more? Yeah. <laughs> what are your thoughts? In Austrian terms baseball? of the league, I would say, if anyone's played in Canada, or has played in the OUA, I'd say it's very similar. Uh, so like the university ball, Sorry. In the university ball, I would say it's very similar. Um, there's a lot of there's good teams, and then there's a middle ground, and the better teams do have better arms. I would say they have more uh, depth. More depth. Yeah. Um, hitting wise, a lot of the guys don't miss fastballs, <laughs> um, sure. and that's you might take it for granted, but you kind of see it really easily. Like they don't miss it. That's actually something that I was thinking about because I had a feeling we were talking about this. One of the biggest differences in the hitters that I've seen because I coach junior college ball in the States, played college baseball. And some of the talent in the United States and in the Juco ball that I've seen is better. But a lot of these hitters here, are I think they're tough to get out and it's because of experience. A lot of these guys here are in the mid to upper 20s 
who have been playing for a while. So they understand the count, the situation, what I like to do as a pitcher and what their approach is. And they might not hit balls 450 feet, but especially you more weight than there. Yeah. If they, if they know what's coming and they have an approach and they get what they're looking for, they're going to get a hit. It might be a single, but it's pretty annoying having to pitch around five singles in a row because you're not hitting your spots. You guys get still will still get themselves out. It's still baseball. It's still tough to hit a ball that's moving coming at you. But the the experience of the hitters makes it more challenging, which is nice. I think it's worthy to know also that across Europe, I mean the level of play even in inside of Austria varies from team to team and even region to region. But in Europe as a whole, it varies too. Last year, I played in Hungary. And Casey and Spencer were just talking about how guys here in Austria smash fastballs. And when I was in Hungary last year, I pretty much got by on almost exclusively fastballs. Just because the sport there isn't as developed as it is in Austria. And Austria isn't as developed as, let's say, the Czech Republic or Italy. Germany. And so... It sort of seems. Did you restart yours again? Yeah. Oh my gosh, Spencer. Yeah. You gotta you have, gotta have wait in the middle, or else. Yeah. It won't. It I won't think you're going up. too wide with your base, for the record. Yeah. Look at Matt's. Matt's is. Yours looks like something. I mean, I really, I really. That's not a pretty thing. It's real thick on the bottom. It's holding it down. That's a good solid couple. Op. Couple inches right there. <clears throat> that, that that's a pretty big base. Yeah. So I think. As a general rule, especially for uh, or uh, here, you know, for European baseball, is the farther west you go, the better the baseball gets. Hungary is farther east than Austria is, so in my second year, I'm you know I'm working my way. We're uh, we're pretty like smack dab in the middle of Europe right now, yeah. just south south uh, southeast of Germany, northeast of Italy, bordering Italy, so we're right there. And I think in, you know, another probably, honestly, couple decades for Austria, the baseball here will be really, really good. Yeah. If, if they keep their development programs yeah. going and they keep trying to popularize the sport, it'll get better. Yeah. Because right now, I mean, the most popular sport here is football or soccer. Soccer. Tennis. Tennis is real popular in Austria. Yeah. yeah. Formula One racing, really popular. Yeah. Another question for you two, um, now that you've been in the system for a few months now. Oh, what are you, what are you, what? Okay. oh yeah, mine's definitely leaning. You can't really tell on the camera, but it is leaning slightly towards the camera on top, like like the leaning tower. No! Like, like the leaning tower. No! Case, oh man. I really don't want to restart this. That's rough. Anyways. Don't get hangry. Eat a chip. Eat a chip. Get it down. <laughs> Swallow. <laughs> Swallow before you break something. <laughs> Question for you. It's like a kid when their favorite ball goes down a sewer drain. You just know you're never going to get it back. You can get it back. It's right in front of you. It's different. <laughs> Continue. What was your question? My question to you two, now that you've been here for a few months, you've met other people doing what we do, mm -hmm. aka imports. We're, you know, we're called imports here in the international baseball game. Because we are imported from a different country. Yeah. Kind of cool being known as a commodity of sorts. What is your thoughts on, you know, the import system and the international community and how the whole bringing, bringing elite, elite talent in to play for your, your team, et cetera. Like, what are your thoughts on that process? As far as the community goes, I think the community is really cool. Cause even though you're playing against these guys and they're on different teams, when I, you go to talk to them and everyone's friendly. Like, cause you're all here, you're all doing the same thing. And there's, there's a little bit of companionship in the similarities of what you do. 
I think the rule that you can only have two imports playing at the same time. That's a rule in Austria. It changes by country. Yeah, I know. Okay. Did not know that. I think it's actually a good rule because otherwise you just it would just be American baseball yeah. or North American baseball in a different country. So it, it preserves the integrity of the game here, um, meaning that it's an Austrian league, but it elevates the competition. It's really probably the best way to do it. Yeah. To keep baseball distinctly in Europe, keep it distinctly European, while at the same time definitely pushing the boundaries in terms of increased level of play, increased knowledge of baseball, et cetera, et cetera. Because, I mean, it's the best way to do it. You bring guys in who've been playing for their entire lives from, you know, the United States or Canada, even like some ex-professional people to come in and teach high-level baseball. That's really the only way that baseball is going to accelerate its growth here in Europe, especially here in Austria, where it's maybe not as developed as it is in other countries. What do you think, Spence? He's real focused. You're going to need yeah, another sleeve. Probably. Uh, in ter- Sweet paprika? Sure. Um, in terms of how is people brought what over, thanks to baseball gentlemen overseas for doing it. That's toasty. It's sizzling. Oh, extra hot. <laughs> I didn't realize. Says the one who bought. Oh my gosh, my lips are burning. Woo. I didn't realize. I didn't realize. Sorry, Spence. He, he's from mean, Washington, so he's not used to spicy food. Washington State, that is. I didn't mean to interrupt. Okay. Right. Uh, I'm going to need another one. Yeah, I mean, I guess thanks to baseball jobs overseas for providing some platform for people to keep playing to kind of see uh, what there is in terms of baseball opportunities outside of college and North America. So um, they've been really helpful in trying to provide those, uh, you know, teams that want players to come over and and just experience new cultures, cultures, new things. And uh, I guess also, too, in terms of, like, development, like to what Casey and Matt have said, like, it's... It's good that they have a certain amount of a rule in terms of like only two imports at a time that can play because it still keeps everything very uh, country based. So wherever you are, at least in Austria, it's two. Um, so it's really a good thing that it keeps people interested and engaged in actual players that play for or who are from Austria in this case. For those wondering, you know, the 12 of you who are going to watch this, Baseball Jobs Overseas is a company. Uh, that helps place imports overseas. So they have, they've sent people all over Europe, all over Europe. They sent people to Australia, they sent people to New Zealand, they sent people to South Africa. So if you're one of the, if one of those 12 people watching is interested in playing in, a, in another country, uh, definitely check out Baseball Jobs Overseas. It was founded by a guy named Dave Burns. Uh, I met him actually this year for the first time. Awesome dude. Um, he lives in Austria full time now uh, with one of his assistants, Jimmy Jensen, lives in Austria full time too. Jimmy Jensen actually is a big representative of the company now, and he still plays international baseball. He plays for a team in Austria, so the community, the community is really, really tight knit. Uh, I played in my first. Did you finish yours? Yeah. Oh, you better put that back on. It's leaning slightly. It's warped. Nice. Spencer has done it officially at probably. Oh, the timer stopped a while ago. That's okay. Casey's the last to go, but that's fine. Casey, how you doing? You're focused. I don't want to interrupt you, but I'm going to for the sake of content. You're probably three quarters of the way done with your ring. What are your thoughts so far? My thoughts on the building process or my thoughts on the ring right now? Both. Well, the building process, my hands are sweaty. Knees weak? My arms are heavy. And so I think, and there's a lot of seasoning on these chips. And so with the sweat, it's creating a paste on my fingers. So I have to be very, very careful. I do not, my finger doesn't stick, that I don't actually knock the table. So I think part of the reason that mats fell over is we were trying to get the, the new camera set up. Table was getting rocked. And it is Pringles, they're chips. This is a potato. It's not <laughs> a stable, it's not a stable material. 
And so I am being very careful right now. And I'm, I'm just taking all the necessary steps to make sure this doesn't fall over. The building process is frustrating. I'm not a tactile person. I'm not good at building things. <laughs> you give me Legos and I'm not gonna build, I'm not gonna use them. Legos are not my forte. Neither is building rings with Pringles. However, here in support of MJ to build this Pringles ring. And I'm gonna build this Pringles ring. Even if we have to fast forward through 50 minutes of me building this ring, it's gonna get built <laughs> for the sake of content. Can you no. fast forward, Bruce? Oh, dang it. This is the final finished product. You can see it's leaning slightly away from me. There's Spencer's. Right, you know what? He finished his. It's kind of it's it's a wide it's a wide version for sure. Spencer's and it's done. Hey, hey, we'll take it. We will take it. Absolutely. How do you feel, Case? Accomplished. Honestly, I'm licking my fingers now. Okay. A lot of good flavor. Well, we all did it. It took, how long did it take for the first one? It's been about five minutes for you. You took five minutes five and minutes. Like 40 seconds. Maybe we'll do a race someday. Probably not though. Uh, but that, that concludes our video. All we needed to do was build a few rings. It took longer than I think we anticipated it to. Uh, but that's okay. Thanks for tuning in. Um, you guys got anything to say? Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, thanks, Dan. All right, till next time. Go Blue Bats. Shout out, Barrett.